glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I hope you've had a blessed week. And welcome to our beautiful Sunday service. This is wherever you're coming from, whether it's morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. I greet you in the name of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to our zone. Welcome to UK Zone A, where we put the word to work. Hallelujah. So, and without further ado, I'd like for you to invite your friends and family, those around you, those in your neighborhood, in your vicinity, to come and join our Sunday service. Hallelujah. So I'll wait, I'll wait, you know, give you a few seconds. Just go ahead, call them, send the link, share it, anyhow you get in contact with them. But make sure that they join our service today to receive these wonderful words that God has for them for their life today. Day. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. But without further ado, actually, before I get started, I would like to thank my highly esteemed Zono Secretary, Pastor Wilson Grace, for this beautiful opportunity to moderate to you beautiful people at home every single week. And, you know, praise God, many more to come as well. It's such an honor to be up here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But before we get started, let's take a moment to pray, as we always do. Glory to God. Now, wherever you are, I stand up or lower your head or just pray. You know, speak in tongues or speak in your own understanding wherever you are. And thank God for this beautiful service. Hallelujah. Oh, glabra de si chambra de ki iske brada da bason te pre eka. Radegi monta aradi zebro kashi pretis kanta ire baradi. Libro caste que para de si prontica adisca, rede di barrotos capa e de santica, rata cada da da bachete que prato chupra e de sentiqueva, rati que sonto copa e de que bacha prati que sa e de ba, rada bainde que chupra da casoto e de barade, racoto che crati casota capa, rate que va soto copra e que chata e arari, reque de mante que va, regue boje brande. Le gibakali, rada gabasho to break ele basanta. Le monde gabaga yarabasho brandi keba a. Rete keba soto kubarani. Rate keba soto kuba. Rete keba sataka. Rata kaba. Rodo bi arabasho to baraba. Rete keba zonto break kaba a secret. Le monde keba ele basho break kaba di. Raka kaka kaka kaka. Rata basha taba yarani. Rade basata keba ra. O re de man de ki bo prati ke sa a re ke ba shoto bra ali ke ba re de ki bo re ka ba sa ya ra ba re de ke ba shoto ko mante e le ente bra ka isi baradi ra do ba shoto ko ba ya ra de o precious father o ra ta ke ba shata ka ra de o ra de ba shata ka ra de ra ka 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 ra ba shoto ko ba ra de ra ta ka be se te ke ba ra de. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for this beautiful service. Thank you, Father, for, for, the, for every segment in this, in this service, from our Rhapsody segment, from our testimony to our praise and worship. Oh, yes, indeed, for the message that we're about to receive today. Thank you, Lord, that all has been picked, handpicked specifically for, by, or by you, Father, for us to edify us, to elevate us, and to lift us up to higher height in the mighty name of our lord and savior jesus christ we pray amen indeed father lord we thank you hallelujah glory to god once again i welcome you to this beautiful service and i know you have, there's so much in store for you so stay tuned and be ready to receive but without further ado i welcome the blw uk zone a choir the best choir in the world glory Mareka 
Jesus, Jesus. 
chariots and horses. My trust is in you, Lord, Jesus. Oh, Shaka, Jesus. Oh, Matera Basa. Men trust in chariots and horses. My trust is in you, Lord, Jesus. Oh, Shaka, Jesus. Praise God, hallelujah. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to you wherever you are watching from around the world. Welcome to Rhapsody Time. It is going to be a blessing time for you. Glory to God. Rhapsody of Realities is our messenger angel, our daily devotional given to us by a dear man of God, Reverend Dr. Chris Oyakilome. And it has got the word of God that is able to build you up every single day. You know, so make sure that in today's reading, you do pay attention. And if you don't have a Rhapsody, get one for yourself. A digital copy and even a physical copy you can get in touch with us now i'd just like to thank our dear zonal secretary of bowk zone a highly esteemed pastor Wilson grace thank you so much sir for this opportunity to lead everybody in the rhapsody devotion for this morning now without further ado we're just gonna get into the reading and today's title is power over sickness the opening scripture is from Mark 16, verse 17 to 18. And it says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Vasa goes on to say, our theme scripture outlines some of the signs of our divinity. One of them is our dominion and power over sickness, disease, and infirmity. Not only do we have power to cast out devils, we have power to heal sicknesses and cure diseases. Jesus made us healers. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He said in Matthew 10 verse 8, heal the sick cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. Notice, he didn't say, pray to me to heal the sick. He said in Luke 10 verse 19, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Hallelujah. So he made us superior to Satan, who is majorly responsible for most of the sicknesses that people suffer with. So why then are there Christians who are still buffeted by sickness, disease and Satan in spite of these realities? Psalm 82 the, um, verse 5 to 7 gives us the answer. It says, They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Wow, what a powerful scripture. So many are ignorant of God's word, and as a result, they're not aware that they have power over sickness and disease. They're not conscious that they have the divine life. Glory to God. You know, if you're a child of God, you know that you have the divine life. You have eternal life, meaning that you cannot get sick. Jesus has given you the high authority. He's given you the power to tread on serpents and scorpions. So make sure that after reading this, you use your power. You use your authority that Jesus has given you. And you do not accept any sickness or disease or infirmity in your life. Even today, if you're watching and you have a sickness, Make sure that you cast it out. Put the word of God to work 
and put the devil in his place, which is under our feet. Glory to God. Jesus said in um, John 10 verse 34, It is not written in your law, I said, ye are gods. Peter calls us partakers of the divine nature, and a scripture reference for that is 2 Peter 1 verse 4. Paul says, we're more than conquerors. You'll find that in the book of Romans 8 verse 37. So sickness really can't and shouldn't thrive in your body because Christ is the life of your physical body. The Holy Spirit in you already gave life to and vitalized your physical body. Hallelujah. So Pastor says, believe and act on these truths today. You have to do it. It's your responsibility and it's very, very simple. By your faith, you will come out with a miracle and you will be able to testify. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This is so amazing. This is so amazing. So that was today's Rhapsody. You know, make sure that you share this with someone today. Someone that you know that's been going through sickness for so long. That can end today. If they're literally on the way to death, you can stop that. You can stop that and give them the word that they can put to work and they can be well. They can be made whole. Glory to God. What a word for today. We have power over sickness. What a truth. Now we're going to get into the confession, the prayer, and it's going to be on the screen so we can all say it together. Dear Father, you're gracious and kind. You're righteous, holy, just and true. Thank you for your life in me that makes me more than a conqueror. I live above sickness and disease. My life is excellent and full of glory. I walk in and manifest the dominion of Christ today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Powerful. So I know that you guys were blessed by today's Rhapsody devotion. You're going to be even more blessed by the next segments in today's service. Thank you for tuning in. For 10 years, daily life was painfully agonizing for 42-year-old Sophie Mithathua from the United Kingdom. Her ordeal began in 2012 when she was involved in a car accident that affected the left side of her body. The results of several tests and examinations at the hospital confirmed her diagnosis of functional neurological disorder and possible multiple sclerosis. Despite the various treatments and procedures, her condition deteriorated badly to a point where she required the aid of a wheelchair to move about. When all hope seemed lost, news of the Healing Streams Live Healing Services with Pastor Chris brought her comfort and confidence. Sophie registered and participated with billions of people across the globe with faith in her heart for a miracle. Finally, the moment Sophie had so anticipated came. She heard the man of God, Pastor Chris, call out her name and declared her healed by the power of God. Sophie, UK multiple sclerosis. In the name of Jesus, I command that devil to turn you loose and come out of your body. Walk and be made whole. Sophie was miraculously healed and made whole while participating in the Healing Streams live healing services. She shares her inspiring testimony. Um, in October, to be exact, 28th of October, 2012, I was involved in a car accident. It was exactly five minutes past eight. I remember correctly because the police officer a few days later told me so. Um, and on, on the M4, they cut, the, the driver cut and hit onto the passenger side because I was a passenger. My husband was the one driving the car. And at that point, I sustained injuries onto my left whole, on my whole left side, my back. Um, I banged my head on the side because I, um, I was leaning on the side of the door. I banged my head on the side of the door as well, so I suffered some head injuries. Um, but the biggest ones that affected me was my whole left side. Things got worse. I should actually say in the year 2016 from February, I started having some weird, uncomfortable pain, discomfort in my left leg. 
where I went to the doctors and the doctors sent me off for MRI scans um, to determine whether there is any issues and was officially diagnosed with functional neurological disorder and borderline MS, multiple sclerosis. And my treating doctor, my general practitioner, which over here in England, we call them GPs. The GP said to me, well, we'll send you off for physio. So I went to physio and as we were doing physio, the lovely physio lady lifted my leg and she asked me to try and push down. I couldn't. And that was a worrying point for me. And that was a worrying point for her. And that is the point when things started deteriorating. Come September 2016, I couldn't move. I couldn't do anything. Two things that actually took me, that affected me was, I, I lost my feeling um, from, my, from my waist down, my feet, down from my waist down to my legs. Um, and um, I became incontinent. I couldn't go to the toilet. I couldn't feel when I had to go have a wee. You know, that is something natural to a human being. Feel natural to go to the toilet. I couldn't feel it. Um, I couldn't walk. I was now wheelchair bound. I couldn't do anything. I was, I felt like my life had stopped. My life stopped from the 16th of September, 2016. So um, we've always watched um, Love World Channel. And we so happened to see healing streams. And at that point, we registered for the, healing, uh, for the healing streams. On the day of the healing streams, I was ready, participated in the worship, and lo and behold, Pastor Chris came and he called my name, Sophie. I curse that disease on you. What I heard was on each side, there was two men, one man on each side, and they said, get up. And when they told me to get up, they helped me up. And I got up. My body felt so light. I felt new. I felt revived. I felt, you know, you feel the presence of God. After pastor prayed for me, the wheelchair is now a thing of the past now. I walk freely. Even to go to the toilet and have a simple wee, I couldn't. But since the healing, I can now go to the toilet. I had a leg brace that they gave me because my leg had flopped because of no, no use. So I don't wear that leg brace anymore. I walk freely because my life just changed from zero to hero. I just thank Jesus because I am made whole. Jesus healed me. Pastor Chris, we want to say thank you for allowing God to use you and allowing for, for giving yourself up to the work of God because many souls are being changed. Pastor, we can never, ever, 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 ever stop saying thank you. Thank you, thank you, sir. We trust that you have been blessed by today's broadcast. If you are not yet born again, we invite you to make Jesus the Lord of your life by saying this prayer. Mean it with all your heart and God will hear you. Oh Lord God, I believe with all my heart in Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I believe God raised him from the dead and he is alive today. I confess with my mouth Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life from this day. And by my faith in his name, the name of Jesus, I receive remission of sins for my soul. I receive eternal life into my heart. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you for giving me a new life. I am born again. I am a child of God now. Thank you, Lord. Amen. If you have just said this prayer, congratulations. You are now a child of God. We would like you to send us an email at feedback at enterthehealingschool.org and we will send you a copy of Now That You Were Born Again, a book by Pastor Chris as you begin your journey in Christ. 
To receive more information on how you can grow as a Christian, please call us now or visit our website. God bless you.
Welcome to church. Come on. <laughs> It's so good to have you. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are watching from. I want to welcome you to today's Sunday service, you know. And to begin with, I want to firstly thank our man of God, Reverend Dr. Chris Oyekinime, for this beautiful opportunity to, to be a minister of the gospel in these end times, you know, for the platform to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to thank my highly esteemed owner secretary for this opportunity to minister God's word to you this morning. We are in for a great time, and I want to say you're welcome <laughs> praise the lord god of mine you know today is got a short but sweet but educative something for you to take home for the rest of your life you know we serve a living god and his word is alive and well his word is living and active amen and now today i'm just gonna touch on a small topic it's called Knowledge removes turbulence. Knowledge removes turbulence. Some of us have been on flights, right? We've been on a plane, on a destination. We're going to our particular island, another country. We're going to abroad. And on the journey, on that plane, sometimes you can find something called turbulence. And for you that have been on planes, you know what that is. It's when the plane goes up, has a little shake, has a little tussle with the wind and the air and it's like oh some people they're free some people they're cool calm and relaxed you know but sometimes it can be yeah like a bit of a troublesome journey when there's so much turbulence but i've come to tell you that in life in the journey of life there can be turbulence and some a lot of these uh, let me begin with the definition of turbulence okay this isn't just that some message, you know, I'm giving you something for you to take home, okay? Turbulence means um, violent, unsteady movement. Violent, unsteady movement. Unrest, troubles, instability. See, this is the definition of turbulence. Maybe that reminds you of some particular weeks or days or moments in your life, times of troubles, of unrest within anxiety stress fear frustration these turbulences but think about this you go on that plane and then there's a moment of frustration a moment of trouble and conflict because of the turbulence in the air but yet you still get to your destination and there was another man on that same plane who was sleeping cool and calm and you both came to the destination yet your journey was a journey of unrest your journey was not a smooth one your journey was not enjoyed but then somebody else enjoyed the same journey you were on what was the difference then what made him at ease while you this particular person was on had no rest think about it there are times in life where you you're anxious about something but then when you get to that particular situation or destination or outcome, you realize, why was I worried? Why was I so fearful to ask for time off at work? You were afraid of what the manager would say. You were afraid of the answer you would get for asking for that favor, asking for that extension. You were afraid. But then when you get to that particular, let's say, person, that person is more than willing to give you the response. Even in evangelism sometimes, there can be a, a troublesome heart when you want to speak to somebody. What are they going to say? What are they going to think? But then you get there and you see a beautiful call to salvation. Somebody giving the heart to Christ. Somebody thanking God that you spoke to them. And then what happens? You realize, wow, fear is a liar. And always remember that fear is a liar. But then that journey. Um, so what I'm, what I'm looking at now is that that journey that didn't have to be troublesome that journey that didn't have to be full of anxiety for example it's like every time a situation comes although you you get what you want but does the journey have to be full of anxiety does the journey have to have unrest is it every time trouble comes a challenge comes there has to be unrest in your spirit there has to be fear there has to be anxiety to go through this thing I said, there's knowledge that removes that turbulence. Do you know, you know the story of Jesus in the boat? He was in the boat. 
and there was winds and there was waves, etc. A storm. And in the boat, amongst the turbulence, he was at peace. Let me read you a scripture. Jeremiah 29, verse number 11. Jeremiah 29, verse number 11. Say, I refuse to be worried. I refuse to be stressed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I know who I am. You know, all of you, a lot of us know this scripture. It says, For I know the plans. Let me read it from the KJV. For I knew, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Save the Lord. Thoughts of peace. Thoughts of peace. And not of evil. To give you an expected end. Do you see that? Thoughts of peace. God has thoughts. God is his plans for us are plans and thoughts of peace. Peace. Peace is an absence of trouble. Peace is power over the crisis. Because it's the power. Listen. I said there's knowledge that eliminates turbulence. For example, Jesus was in the boat, right? But the disciples were full of fear and they were worried and they were anxious. They were on a journey to a destination, yet Jesus was at peace and he had, it was a challenge, but Jesus was calm in that challenge. How many times have you been calm in the face of staggering opposition? When the battles come, the fights of faith, faith, are you the one that's always going, battling with anxiety, with fear? There's a place of dominance, okay? So what did Jesus have? Jesus had a higher knowledge. He had a higher knowledge that, listen, he had a knowledge and the not the word I'm getting at for knowledge is, is an awareness. Because some of us, we have a knowledge, but we haven't, hasn't become aware, hasn't become awakened to our spirit. The word, the Greek word is Ido, E-I-D-O, E-I-D-O. It's an awareness, it's a consciousness. Jesus had a consciousness that he had power over the elements. He had power over the elements. He had power over nature. And what did he do? With that knowledge, he began to release words. How did he release words? Because he had the knowledge on how to control the elements by his words. He said, peace be still. So there's a knowledge. For example, do you have the knowledge that all things work together for your good? In Romans 8 verse 28, let's read that quickly. He said that this awareness this knowledge will eliminate turbulence will eliminate unrest will eliminate fear and anxiety and troubles so that in the affairs of life there's joy unspeakable full of glory amen but there needs to be an awareness there needs to be a knowledge a knowledge of the word of god you see this kind of knowledge this kind of awareness will change your whole world forever there'll be no more fear when trouble comes because trouble will come jesus christ said be of good. He says, in the world you shall have tribulations. That's John 16, verse 33. He says, in the world. Let me, let me read that for you. Let's read that. The words of Jesus. He says, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. You see that? In Christ we have peace. He's given us words. He's given us some particular words. What's that? Knowledge. That in him we might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. You shall have trials. You shall have challenges. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Are you aware that in Christ Jesus we have overcome the world? Are you aware that, listen, the spirit of God that made the whole earth, the whole universe is alive in you. He lives in you. That's why the Bible says in first in first Corinthians chapter number six. Let me read that for you. Oh my I I'm just I'm moving by the spirit here. My goodness, you know, it's like my whole structure. It just I'm just I'm so stud, okay? First Corinthians six. But I wanna slow down, okay? I'm gonna slow down, okay? I'm gonna slow down, okay. So Jesus had knowledge, okay? He had knowledge that he had the ability to control the elements. Thereby, because of that knowledge, he was not ruffled by the storm. So the question then is, what knowledge do we have? 
But we come through a similar journey of life because they were on a boat going to somewhere and there was turbulence on the journey. But Jesus was like, Jesus was cool, calm and collective. The disciples were full of fear. The same way when you go on a plane, some people are fearful when the turbulence comes, while others are cool, calm and collective. Why? Because they know, for they, the people on the plane have a knowledge, a particular knowledge that, oh, um, I have professionals in the cockpit. This is a normal thing and I know I'm going to my destination. It's nothing to worry about. It's a knowledge, okay? Now, that's a nice knowledge, okay? But there's a higher knowledge of life. In the journeys of life, in the flights of life, there's a higher knowledge that will give you, that will rid you of fear and give you faith. No, that will rid the fear and provide you the dominion that you've been given in Christ Jesus. For example, in the journeys of life, our first response doesn't have to be that of worry and anxiety and fear and confusion. No, with a higher knowledge, we have dominion over the elements. For example, we just were reading Romans 8 verse 28, and we know, and we know that all things work together for my good. To them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. So there's an, the word is I know. It's an awareness. I'm aware that all things are functioning together for my benefit. Therefore, I can never be disadvantaged. Why? Because we serve a God that creates destinies, brothers and sisters. He creates destinies such that even if you made an error that can now scoot you on a wrong path, by God's grace and his divine ability, he can create a new destiny from that, 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 that journey you went on. That unplanned route you went down. He can make it good. He can make it pleasant. He can make all things work together for your good. Therefore, when you find yourself in a situation, you understand that, listen, I play by a different set of rules. The moment you declare all things are working together for my good, immediately life responds nature responds and causes all things to work together for your benefit so we serve a god that creates new destinies blessed be god that means if you made a mistake that caused you to miss the like a way a, a path that was planned for you like you'll never disadvantage because our father is a father that creates destinies that means from that era he can make something beautiful out of it are you aware? That's a knowledge, a knowledge of God's word that all things work together. All things, including your mistakes, all things, including the job you got, the job you did not get, the job you did not get, including that person that may have chosen to do business with somebody else. All things are working together for your good, for your benefit. It's an awareness that removes troubles, removes the frustration and worries and anxieties. It removes it because it's a higher knowledge. It's knowledge from the word of God, from the scriptures, from the living author of life. Glory to God. I refuse to be worried. I refuse the turbulence in the name of Jesus Christ. I know who I am. The Bible says, no, you know. Don't you know in 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19, it says, don't you know that your body is a living tabernacle? That same spirit of God that was there in Genesis in the beginning, that hovered over the face of the waters, the one that garnished the heavens, is that he lives in us, my goodness. How can we fail? I've been meditating on this of recent. And when I meditate on it, like fire just erupts in my bones. I feel like scattering the place. The same spirit that was there in the beginning is now living in me. I how can I ever lose? Like, you cannot contemplate losing anything. You come to understand that I've been called to showcase that anything is possible. I've been called to demonstrate that anything is possible. Why? Because this is Christ in me, the hope of glory. Christ in me? That's Christ in me by the Holy Ghost. It's the hope for any challenge. It's the hope for any situation. It's the hope for my nation. It's the hope for salvation. Christ in me. Pastor Peter says, the man of God says, that anything you need in life is inside you. All the solutions, the answers, and everything you require for the life of godliness.
things inside us. But then the knowledge, the knowledge, the awareness is so important. The Bible says that the communication of your faith in Philemon 1 verse 6, that the communication of your faith will become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. There's an awareness, brothers and sisters, that we use turbulence. That's how Jesus was a master of life. Every time an adverse situation came to him, his first response was not worry. Sometimes we um, we win, but not the way God would like us to win. He doesn't want any case. Sometimes we hear information, news that may not be, it may be a surprise. Does the fear and worry does it have to work? See, when you had when you washed your mouth this morning, which I'm sure you did, you squeezed some canister a canister of toothpaste right when you squeezed it what's inside came out when the presses of life try to squeeze you what's inside you comes out what's inside you is it faithful or is it fear that's what we're looking at i refuse to fear in the name of jesus i have a higher knowledge that's why when jesus was in the boat there was no fear in his camp no fear in his ego why because he had knowledge that he had power over the enemy in the journeys that you're going to face in life there's some elements that you have power over you have power over every journey over any element of every journey there's an awareness brothers and sisters and like I said we know we are aware that all things work together for First John 4 verse 4 says ye are God little children and I've overcome them because why? because why? because greater is he that is in us then he that is in the world. There's an awareness that the power inside me is greater than all the powers put together in the world. That come what may, put all the forces together in the world, together against me. The one inside us is greater. The force inside us is greater. There's an awareness of that. And no matter what letter you receive from your post, no matter what news you have, no matter the jurisdiction, no matter the government, no matter the challenge, you come to know. All these things I am the Because there's an awareness. Then that being, you're now excited about challenges. You're excited to put the word of God to showcase. Because you've been called to prove the word. You've been called to showcase there is a God in heaven. You've been called. Every challenge that comes to you, it's been, it comes to you to showcase the glory of God. The Bible says Christ in you, the hope of glory. The hope of that situation is to Christ in you. So when somebody else goes through the same situation, you're there to confirm them that, listen, all things are possible. I face the same thing and I prove that all things are possible. So when challenges come, you're saying, yes, I'll eat you up. The devil, I will chew you. I will eat you. You can in your health. You're going to put the word of God to work. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna get, get the, what the words God said about your health. That uh, he wants you to know in 1 John 5 verse 11 that you have eternal life. So with that knowledge and that meditation, it becomes an awareness that the very life that makes God God, the life, the God life, the life that makes God God is, a, is here, is alive in me. And as you meditate, that consciousness, the same way I'm conscious now that if I lean back, the chair is catching. I don't need to, like, I'm just aware of the chair. I'm, like, you need to be so aware of the realities of the kingdom. The oh, I, like I said, this these knowledges, this knowledge will move turbulence. Move turbulence. I refuse to fail in the name of Jesus. I refuse to be sick in the name of Jesus. All things are working together for my good in the name of Jesus Christ. I write some things down. So we must enjoy the journey of life. We must enjoy the journey. God has called us, God has called us into our life peace and joy we've been called to enjoy the journey of life you see that lady that was on the plane and the turbulence comes and then she's not enjoying the journey there's a man next to her called karma collective enjoying the journey god wants us to enjoy our journeys of life we shouldn't just get into heaven after a life of anxiety and fear and we have to come and we're just saved from this life of anxiety and fear where there's no troubles no jesus christ he said you will have troubles but be of good cheer be joyful in me that you have peace glory to god in me in christ 
So like I said, let the communication of your faith will be effectual by the acknowledgement. Come to you, let it come to your awareness of who you are in Christ. The knowledge of who your father is. It will remove turbulence. It will remove the frustration. It will remove the fear. Glory to God. Let me ask you to you. I'm a success. Glory to God. Oh boy. Oh boy. I'm just thinking. Christ in me. The hope of glory. Christ in me. I have a many things on that reason. I said, no matter what I face, no matter the challenges, no matter the type and the kind, Christ in me is the hope. The fact that Christ is in me, there's hope. There's hope for an answer. And there's guaranteed solutions. There's a knowledge, brothers and sisters. Like I just mentioned earlier, and we know that all things are working for your good. The moment you declare, all things are working for my good, nature responds. The elements respond. In conclusion, you know, to conclude with what I've said, I know I'm going to get fast, but I want you to know that the turbulence is not necessary. The unrest doesn't have to be in the journey, in the fight of faith. In the fight of faith, the fight of faith, the fight of faith, of joy. Some of you are going to have to wake up and have talking sessions and use your tongue, use the sword of the spirit to reframe your aeon as you put in the word of God to Jesus Christ had the awareness, but then he had the epignosis. He, he had the revelation and the relationship with the knowledge. He began to fellowship with the knowledge, put it to work. That's why when he was in the boat, he watched, he calmed the storms of his words. Who taught him the Holy Ghost? He said, my father and me do of the works. If the father and him was teaching him, that's the Holy Ghost in you. The Holy Spirit in you was going to show you what to do, how to come out of the crack man, how to come out of the mess. It's the Holy Spirit within you. And that's why you must have a long time with the Spirit of God. You can't be spending all your time on social media, on the affairs of life. A long time of God. That is your, that's your shelter in the storm. The power of a crisis. That time with the Spirit of God. The one that garners the heavens. The one that gives you a mind to comprehend the up the worry. The one that gives you the, the, the mind to that opposition to even com comprehend the opposition. Like the Holy Spirit is the author of life. And he's inside us. I will never lose. I can never lose. I can never be afraid. I can never be down. How can I be down? How can I be down? All things are working together for my good. How can I? It doesn't matter the mistake I made. All things are working together for my good. It doesn't matter the, where you find yourself. It doesn't matter. I know what to do. You'll give me the wisdom to solve the case. I, knowledge that will lose turbulence. I want I decide I've decided to live with you. I decided to live. I, I decided a long time ago. I decided I'm not, I like my life. Therefore, I have no place for Satan, no place for worry. I like my life, and I'm gonna enjoy the journey of life every single day in the name of Jesus. And you must decide that as well. When information comes to you that you didn't expect, refuse to worry. Don't let worry be the first response. Don't let anxiety and fear and confusion. No. See, let, let the consciousness of the word of God rise up in you. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. In all these. We are more than God. Not some of these things. In all these things, my goodness, let God be true in every man a liar. Let His word be true in all I am. Not some. In all these things, I'm more than the conqueror. Knowledge that removes turbulence. Removes the turbulence so you can make the journey of life. Let the knowledge of God's word. That's when you meditate, meditate. Let them. The Bible says, Look, let the word of God drill in your vision. Let the Bible, the Bible says, the Bible says so mightily do the word of God and prevail. So mightily, Acts chapter 19 verse 20, so mightily do the word of God and prevail. It can prevail, if it can prevail in Ephesus, it can prevail in your mind. It can prevail in your life. It can break down the, the, the doors of depression and the, the structures of depression and anxiety. Those first responders, you always respond in a particular way. The word of God will break down that response, that response system. No, now you respond in faith. You respond not in fear, in faith in God's word. My goodness. It's time to move. It's time to come out of that crooked path, that crooked plane of turbulence into the plane of business first class. Rest. <laughs> Does that mean in the first class you may have turbulence? You may have turbulence. 
but you are peace because all things are working together for your good. No weapon fashioned against you can prosper. You know, there's so much I've shared. So much that I've shared that he hasn't actually heard. <laughs> we thank God for media, for technical, you know, but I pray that the Spirit of God, you know, um, was able to communicate all that I wanted to share to you today. And I want to thank our highly esteemed on the sector again for this opportunity to share God's word with you. I love you daily. And if you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ, I invite you today to be Jesus Christ, the Lord of your life. All this that we spoke about cannot um, walk without you receiving Jesus into your life. If you want to take that step today and start a fresh page of God, where that you can make all things work together for your good, for your benefit. Just close your eyes and repeat these words after me and say, Oh Lord God, I believe with all my heart in Jesus Christ, your Son. I believe He died for my sins and rose again on the third day. And I declare today that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life. I am born again. I am a child of God. In Jesus' name, Amen. Congratulations. And if you said that prayer, please contact the numbers on the screen. Get us on the screen. We'd love to hear from you. And I pray that the name of Jesus be named upon you and that you be strengthened for the journey, for the times, for the seasons, and for the battles in the name of Jesus. That yes, you will feel your calling and your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. That if we say that there's nothing in you, you are strong and healthy and sound, and I rebuke the migraines in the name of Jesus Christ. You are free in the name of Jesus. The migraines are gone from you in the name of Jesus. And this day forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us today in service. God bless you. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you so much for those words, sir. And I know they've been impactful to you at home. You know, let us know what you think. Well, let us know what you receive. The testimonies that have come out of your life from these words that you've, you've heard today and you receive from today's service, from today's message of the day. Hallelujah. So, you know, as always, we'll have our contact details showing below for you to get in contact with us. You know, let us know how this word has impacted your life, how it has changed you and elevated you. Hallelujah. But without further ado, I'd like us to go into our offering segment. You never come without an offering to give to the Lord. Without further ado, I welcome the BLW UK's on choir to lead us through this offering segment.
I hope you took down the details and you've given your offerings. If you haven't, the offering details will still be below so that you'll be able to give and always, you know, watch back and take time to give your offerings. Praise God. So without further ado, I'm going to pray for the offerings. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, Lord, we thank you for these, your children that I have given. And I know that the seed that you have given to them will be multiplied in Jesus' name. Oh, Rabbi Sinti Shabra Kiba Sata Ire Kiba Soto Praa. Le grande bo o si grabande ki pra izi li pra atishke rada ba se ke le ba ro ko manta ike sata iriba rade bo sha pra ka ise kande ke ba ra ka sha ta iriba soto ke ba o rati ba she te ka o hallelujah praise God thank you everybody for joining service this week I'm joking I'm not there yet I'm not there yet before we get to that. I would like to welcome our very special guests, our very first timers that are here for the very first time. As you're joining us, I welcome you. And on behalf of our man of God, Pastor Chris Oyakilome, and my highly esteemed zona secretary, Pastor Wilson Grace, welcome. And I hope you enjoy. There will be our details showing down here below. Please do get in contact with us, you know, where we can direct you to the nearest Christ Embassy or the nearest Love World. BLW UK Zone A or BLW Church near you. Hallelujah. Praise God. But without further ado, I do have to say goodbye for today. But before I do that, haha, I got you again. Before I do that, let's take a look at this week's announcement. Stay tuned. Praise God. I hope you have taken down those notes. You know, we just uh, concluded our Reach Out World special with our man of God, Pastor Chris Oyakilome. It was so powerful. It was so beautiful. I hope you watched it. You know, so you don't want to miss out in any more programs like this. So as those announcements are showing, take down the dates and make sure that you are participating and you are there. If you can be there physically, make sure you are there. Praise God. Don't ever miss out. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But yes, now it is that time where I do have to say goodbye. And I will see you again next week, same time. But before we do go, we will round up with a word of prayer. And we thank God for this beautiful service. And we thank God for this beautiful platform where we can share the word of God with you. And you can receive and be changed and be elevated Hallelujah. Se pran te ke bro do she pra kande isi pra. Lo pra ke shata karare di sam pra te ke ba. Ra te ke se ba ara te ke bro do she ba ara di. Ro do ba san te ba ri ke sho pra da da i le ba. Ro do ba ke te sa pra de ke alaro. Ra de po she kra te isa ta apara de. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you for joining this week's service. And I will see you next week. If I don't see you next week, I'll see you in Rapture. See you soon. Bye-bye.